Milky Way photography is easier than you think, and today in this video we're going to dive into how to use your camera to take pictures of the Milky Way. Wong here and today we are diving into this image of the Milky Way taken at Arches National Park. The goal of this video is to help you guys take pictures of the Milky Way and realize it's not as hard as you think. Let's go ahead and we'll dive into the settings that I use to take this photo and then how to apply that to take your very own Milky Way photos. This image was taken with an aperture of f4 which is the widest that this lens, the ones I use for this, the 16 to 35 millimeter Nikon could go. The focal length used for this was 16 millimeters and the ISO was 6400 because the D750 can handle high ISO pretty well. More about that later. This was taken with a 20 second exposure and this is a single image, not a foreground and a sky blended together. This is one image at 20 seconds. Now that the settings are out of the way, let's go ahead and break that down in regards to astrophotography and specifically Milky Way photography. Note that this is just an intro into astrophotography. If you want to invest more by buying more advanced equipment like telescopes and star trackers, then that's going to up your game, but we're not going to cover that today. Today we're only going to go over how to get Milky Way photos with just your camera, a lens, and a tripod. First off, if you're new to the astrophotography game, I would advise don't go out when it's already dark. It's really hard to see out there and especially setting up your camera, changing settings and getting everything set up is really, really hard to do when it's pitch black out. So I would advise going out around the time when the sun is setting to set up, get your foreground, get your composition in place, set up, get all your settings right and everything before the sun fully sets and it's really, really dark. To set up your composition, I would recommend using an app like PhotoPills or Skywalker or doing research in advance so that you know where the Milky Way is gonna be relative to where you are. This is gonna allow you while you're out at sunset before the Milky Way actually comes out and is visible to frame your shot, get your composition, get everything set up. So in setting up your composition, there's a few different things you can do. First off, you wanna make sure you've got the core of the Milky Way, that's the most vibrant part and that's going to be based off of where, which hemisphere you're in, what time of year you're going to be out. So you're going to want to do research into that to make sure that for one, you can actually see it because you can't see it in the winter in the Northern hemisphere. So don't go out in December trying to get the core of the Milky Way. If you're just starting out in astrophotography, I say the first thing that you should do is try to just get the Milky Way in and of itself. Don't worry too much about the foreground elements, but once you're trying to dabble with more exciting compositions than just the Milky Way core itself, then try to get the core with some foreground elements like a tree or a rock structure or something like that. Once you have your composition set, you're gonna to wanna to switch to manual focus and then focus to infinity. This is gonna be slightly different per lens and camera combination, but a lot of lenses have a switch on the side that allows you to switch from manual focus to uh, autofocus. So in this case, we're gonna switch from the automatic focus to manual focus. Some cameras have that setting inside their menu, so just go find out where your manual focus setting is on your camera. Once you've switched to manual focus, you want to focus on something that's probably at least 100 feet away, if not more. If you're in an open field, try to focus on a far tree far away or a far light. If you're focusing at night, this is where it gets a little tricky. To best focus your camera if it's already dark, the things I've found effective is to focus on a star or the moon if you can. So in order to do that, you want to open your aperture as wide as possible, crank your ISO up as high as possible, and to go use your live view to point it up at the stars or at the moon or some object that is very, very far away. And once you do that, you're gonna adjust your manual focus ring and keep turning that until that object is as small and sharp as possible. So you want to zoom in as much as you can with the live view. And if you can find a dim star, it doesn't have to be super bright. As long as you find a star, you should be able to zoom into that star um, on live view and then to keep turning your focus ring till that star is sharp. This may take several tries by going back and forth past the sharpness on each side to get the exact sharpness that you need to make sure all the stars are sharp. 
once you have your stars sharp, make sure that you do not touch that focus again, otherwise you're gonna have to refocus. Make sure that you're in manual focus so that every time you take an image, it doesn't try to auto focus. And because it's so dark out, it's gonna completely screw up the focus. So ensure that you don't touch anything once you are focused and good to go. Next, you wanna make sure that your aperture is as wide as possible. In the case of this image, I was able to use an f4 aperture because that was the widest that this 16 to 35 millimeter that I had on hand at the time would go. My preferred lens is this Rokinon 14 millimeter 2.8 aperture, and this is much wider than the f4 and it allows uh, more light capture, getting more detail in the stars. But all in all, f4 still works fine. Just use the widest aperture that you can get. Next we have the ISO settings, and this image was taken with ISO 6400. So the ISO setting is something that you're gonna to wanna to configure based off of your camera. I would start off with an ISO of about 800. Try taking some sample shots using the exposures that we'll go over in a second, and from there you can try to gauge your ISO to see if you wanna crank the ISO up to get more amplified signals of light to increase the amount of stars or to turn the ISO down if the image is too noisy. So the ISO is something that's a little fluid. You're gonna to wanna to tweak around to try to see what works best for your camera. Too much ISO and you're gonna get a lot of noise in your image. Too low ISO and the image might not be bright enough. I usually use something in the range of 1600 to 3200. Sometimes I push up to 6400, like in this case, um, but sometimes I even go down as low as about 800 or 400 if I am using a very long exposure and the lens camera combination allows for that. So definitely you wanna just keep experimenting and trying to get the right combination of ISO to noise uh, in your image. Lastly, we have the exposure, and this image was taken with about a 20 second exposure. The exposure time that you can use is directly related to the focal length of the lens that you're using. Generally speaking, a good place to start is with the 500 rule. If you have a 50 millimeter lens, then you would take 500 divided by 50 and that gives you 10. So 10 would be the maximum amount of seconds that your exposure can be before you start to see star trails. This will also vary if you have a crop sensor camera, for example, if you have a Nikon D5500, then that's a 1.5 times crop ratio. So now your equation would be 500 divided by 50 divided by 1.5, and that would give you about six and a half seconds, and I would always round down to six seconds because you don't wanna round up because the more you round up or the higher the number, the more likely you're gonna see star trails. This isn't a hard fact, but I would advise that you generally use this rule to try to see where you should start with your exposure time and try not to go above that limit. You might just wanna keep going down if you are seeing a star trail. So examine your images like we did with the ISO, zoom into a star after you take an image and see if it's sharp or if it's kind of looks like a jelly bean or kind of trailing a little, then you want to reduce your exposure time until you get those stars sharp. So generally speaking, that's it for the settings. And if you haven't done this before, it might take a little bit of experimentation to get it all right, but it's, that's it. It's not too complicated. You just have to go through those, those steps and try to get um, those settings right based off of the lens and camera combination that you have. Now it just comes to setting up the camera. So you definitely wanna make sure you have a sturdy tripod because these long exposures, if you're taking a 10, 15, 20 second exposure, any bump in the camera is going to shake the whole image and it's just gonna be blurry. So you want a sturdy tripod and if possible, you want a remote shutter, something that you can click and not have to press the camera directly. However, if you don't have a remote shutter, the best thing that you can do is to use the self timer button. Set the timer for maybe five, 10 seconds on the camera so that after you push the button on the camera, it has time to absorb the push that you're uh, hitting on the shutter and then to stabilize itself and get a clear steady shot without you having to push it and then shake the camera when you let go. So before you go out, the last thing to check is the weather and the light pollution. Make sure you have as clear of a sky as possible because clouds will obviously obstruct the stars. Light pollution is something that, unless you're doing this kind of thing, people don't really check. And I'm going to link a light pollution map here so that you can go and check out your area and see the light pollution around you and find the best places that you can go to get clear night skies without a lot of light pollution. That's about it for astrophotography. It just comes to putting all of that together and being able to go out and practice because it's not easy to go out and to master all of this in one go. So there are a lot of settings to remember, but just go out and keep practicing. You're not gonna get any better unless you practice and try this for yourself. If you want, before you actually go out to an area with 
uh, really, really clear skies if it's far away, practice in your backyard. You'll be able to get some images of the stars and things like that. You might not get insane Milky Way shots because of light pollution, but you can still get really, really good images of the night sky just to be able to practice, make sure everything is sharp and make sure you understand it before you actually go drive out however far away it is to be able to go get to a night sky that you can take a really clear Milky Way shot. But just remember, start off with your manual focus, focus really far away on infinity, get it sharp, then go to your aperture, make sure it's as wide as possible, then go to your ISO, configure it depending on your camera, start off with about 800 and bring it up if you have to, and then use a focal length that's as wide as possible so that you can get the longest exposure time, again with the 500 rule as a great place to start, and then it really just comes down to pressing the shutter. So definitely go out, practice, practice, practice. So that's the basics of astrophotography for you to be able to use any camera with a lens and a tripod to be able to go snap a photo. There are definitely more advanced techniques and things that you can do to improve your astrophotography game. And in the future, I do plan on making videos like that. So if you're interested, just let me know in the comments below. I'll go ahead and leave a link for my Instagram as well. Go ahead and check that out if you wanna see more photos like this. And if you see photos that you want videos like this for, leave that in the comments below. And if you have any questions on astrophotography or photography in general, feel free to leave those in the comments below and I'll go ahead and look at those. As always, thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and hit that like button if this was helpful for you, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you guys in the next one.